Hello and welcome to another Purveyor of Light Photoshop Quick Tip. Today we're going to be discussing all about sharpening. Uh, there seems to be about exactly no less than 26 different ways to sharpen your photos in Photoshop. And uh, each one has its place. But I'm going to talk about a particular process that I use that I find gives me the greatest results in sharpening. Um, when you're looking at an image and you want to sharpen it, like we, we can zoom into here and we could see, you know, it's not exactly as sharp as I would like it to be on the rock. You know, it's, it's not bad, but it's not as good as I would like it to be. Um, the, the habit is to turn around and just use a traditional sharp sharpening method. And, uh, you know, they may come up and, you know, go to filter and then blur and then go sharpen and then unsharp mask. They'll come in and you'll notice how we got all these specular highlights in it. Uh, we can adjust this until we do that and our radius. And uh, a lot of times we wind up with quite a crunchy, crunchy uh, um, picture uh, for over sharpening. The wrong things get sharpened. Uh, now we want everything on this rock sharpened, but a better way to sharpen is not just with a, a broad brush like this. It's actually to target, okay? It's actually best to target the midtones. Don't do the shadows because that introduces noise and, and blockage. Uh, don't do the highlights because that again, Will have a bad effect on your photos and introduce noise. Um, what I I suggest is sharpen only the midtones, okay, of your image. And I'm going to show you here a technique that I use that I find gives me the best results in almost all photos. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer, Command or Control J. Okay. So now we have a duplicate layer, and this is the one we're going to to deal with with the sharpening. Now, again, it's going to be a little bit weird, but uh, it's because this method works well. All right, so I'm going to come down to the, the mo blend mode here, and I'm going to select vivid light, linear light. Now, doesn't that look good? I know. I'm just kidding. We're only partially there. All right, so with linear light, we are then going to go to filter and then other and then high pass all right now in the gray area here pick and click anywhere you want so you can get a, a view of this and I hope this can come out on the the video but anyhow this is what we need to to view about our edges of the sharpening I'm going to go way crazy all right now, I would never go, this would be way too crunchy. Uh, but anyhow, you're looking for the definition in this preview window. And again, wherever you click is where it's going to give you that preview, okay? So I like this leaf area here. Gives me a good idea what's going on. And so I'm going to adjust the radius until I feel. And I'm going to say... Maybe 2.2 for this particular picture. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And there we go. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to zoom into the rock. And I want you to look at it, OK? Here's the, the without the sharpening and with the sharpening. You see what's happening to the, the highlights, especially? And, and the shadows, how they're being uh, affected, it ruins the image. It makes it crunchy, and, and, they, and I don't want that. I want it sharp, but I only want to sharpen the mid-tones, okay? So the best tool in order to do this, okay, is a luminosity mask. So I'm going to come up, and I'm going to use my favorite uh, TK7 panel, and... Uh, I'm going to make a luminosity mask and I'm going to do the mids. So here's the 
level one mids. Now remember, with a luminosity mask, anything that's in white or gray, in this case, is signifying that those are the areas that are going to be affected. Okay, if I go to a level two, that means more is going to be affected. If I go to a level three, that even means even more is going to be affected. Okay, so you can see here, anything in white is going to be affected by the shadowing. Uh, okay, because that's what luminosity masks. They're black and white images where white is going to get the most effect. Okay, all right, so I'm going to go ahead for a level three, and I'm going to make a mask out of this and there we go okay now i want you to look at the difference okay all we did is put a mask on it but look how different the rock looks okay i'm going to disable the mask let me close this panel up so you can see everything all right i want you to to really see how it affects the rock here okay I'm going to disable that mask and look at that the crunchy default is terrible but when i limit the sharpening to the mid tones only okay now i've got a very nice effect a beautiful image and i brought in so much more detail there's your before and there's your after okay and again I think if you if you look at this, I think you're going to agree. This will give you a wonderful, wonderful result. Okay, so again, limit your sharpening to midtones, and I think you're going to have much better effects. And again, that's why I am a big believer in luminosity masks. So again, the before and the after and I, I know in video it's hard to turn around and see but you can look at the rock and say the before and the after okay so there you go there's my secret uh, sharpening method uh, so hopefully you find this useful experiment with your own photos and uh, see if it works for you until next week you guys take care